Maddie Levine back for MMA Island. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, make sure you're liking, you're subscribing, you're sharing, you're doing all that good stuff so we can continue to bring you some of the best fighters around the world. And today I'm actually joined by uh, a fighter from Canada. So the power of social media, it's wonderful. We can just join from different countries. (laughs) And uh, today, uh, Tom Theokaris is joining me. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. No, thanks for having me. I, uh, I'm, I'm excited to do this. So, Yeah, no, I was looking forward to this because I, I have a few questions for you. Uh, is poutine as good as every Canadian says it yeah, is? It's so good. It's, is it's, it really? You know what? There's also, the, there's, this, there's this place called Smokes Poutine where I went to school in London, Ontario for university. And at, after the bar every night, I'd get this, go to this place called Smokes Poutine and you get different flavors. You get like a fajita one. Um, like like a butter chicken, like just all these different kinds, like in in this poutine, and uh, yeah, okay. you got to do it. Sometimes. You sold me. You sold me. <laughs> yeah. uh, but let's get let's get down to what we're really talking about here. We'll talk about food later. Um, <laughs> how did it feel to start 2022 with a first round knockout? Oh man, you have no idea. It was it was felt really good. Um, nice to shake off the cobwebs. I hadn't competed in roughly uh, a year and a half well a little less than a year and a half um and uh it was a big win it was out in alaska it was for a championship title so it was my first pro uh title so um that feels good to have that on the resume um you know fought a pretty tough guy um went out there knocked him out in uh in a minute and a half so can't complain especially starting off the year like that that's awesome now i understand that you're your road through MMA and your road through life rather kind of hit a bumpy road at one point. Yeah. You ended up losing the love of your life last yeah. year. Um, yeah. Very intense for anybody to go through. And my sincere condolences to you, oh, your family, no, her you. family. Yeah. Um, no. Was, was it a sudden loss? Yeah, it was, uh, she ended up getting into an accident while on vacation in, uh, in Greece. You know, I won't, kind of get into those details but of yeah course. she was just uh just uh yeah just all of a sudden and uh, I was in Canada here and uh, you know she kind of went missing I ended up calling the police in, in Greece and you know kind of won't get into it too much but yeah it's 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 been horrible you know there's there's days where just you know my depression kind of gets the best of me and like I just won't get out of bed and you know I'll have anxiety and uh, it's something that I'll definitely be um, struggling with for the next little bit and I'm just trying to kind of move forward. Um, but I'm very, you know, fortunate enough to have, you know, a great support system, my family, my mom and dad, my brother, uh, my friends, they're amazing and um, very privileged to be an MMA fighter because otherwise I don't know where I would kind of let my energy go or put my energy towards. And so it's uh, I'm very thankful that I have this in my life and it's very it's it's helped uh, it's helped me in the process of, you know, the grieving process. So, well, you're certainly a strong person mentally Appreciate and that. physically. You are an MMA Thank fighter. You. And speaking <laughs> of your speaking of your support system, is it true that your parents weren't exactly the biggest fans of your yeah, MMA career no, at the beginning? They actually, so <laughs> I come from a very Greek family and um, that means like my family worries a lot about me. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, they just, I was doing it behind their back for the longest time. And, you know, my first few MMA fights, they didn't know about, and we're kind of just, uh, you know, I just, I knew I always wanted to do it and nothing was going to stop me. And I kind of had this trajectory where I knew I wanted to be a professional MMA fighter and they just didn't really, it was a newer sport. So they didn't really understand what was going on. They just kind of thought, you know, like I'm just roughneck and I don't know what they just they just didn't want me you know getting hurt and um getting involved but uh yeah it's it's turned out to be uh incredible I'm very happy that I kind of said f you <laughs> to, to my oh face. no <laughs> and I said, well I'm have they come stuff. around since then they do yeah they're my biggest okay. supporters now so yeah okay. it was, I think it would have been after my third um uh, amateur MMA fight. I was three and zero, and I had three first round knockouts. And they're like, "Ah, just mm-hmm. tell us next time." So yeah, now yeah. now now we're 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 here and we're 
good to go. I understand that family dynamic, though. I come from a very Italian family, yeah, uh, so <laughs> they, uh, yeah, they they get very involved and very um, worried, and yeah. it takes a lot to kind of convince them sometimes. But I'm yeah. glad that they came around for you because support is very, very important. Yeah. Um, you know, I have to say my hats off to you because I admire how open and honest you are. Uh, you were recently in an interview talking about how you need some, put some more work in until yeah. you feel like you're ready yeah. for the UFC. And I feel like 100%. a lot of fighters don't admit that. They're like, yeah, no. I'm ready, let's go. No. I really admire your honesty. And yeah. you know, saying that you need to put some work in, how have you been doing that? And do you consider yourself on the right path right now? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm always evolving. Um, and I think being realistic with yourself is just, you know, one step of you know being ahead of like the others like for example you know there's some guys who aren't ufc caliber or aren't ufc ready and they're going out in their post-fight interviews you know after they just won a decision against a you know a, a, a guy with a losing a joe schmo yeah. yeah and they're like we want the ufc and it's just like you just won a, a, a decision against a guy with a losing record like you know that's not what the ufc is looking for um, however, you know, I am always involved, oh, sorry, always evolving, um, mm -hmm. as a fighter. And what that means is like, you know, even doing things like hiring a new nutritionist, um, doing, starting to do strength and conditioning, not only like the MMA aspect of like, you know, working on my weaknesses there, like, you know, getting better in my grappling and that sort of stuff, but just like overall, just being a whole complete fighter in the sense of I've got a nutritionist, I've got a strength and conditioning coach. I'm, you know, doing the proper things. I'm eating the proper foods. I'm going to bed at the, at the correct times. And, uh, you know, just, just being a complete uh, martial artist. So. Mm. And getting rounds with champions certainly makes yes. you better. <laughs> Yo, we, we got to talk about this. You getting rounds with Francis Ngannou. Yeah. I mean, people only dream yeah. or have nightmares of yeah. fighting Francis Ngannou. Tell me how this happened. How did this well, all come together? It's funny because I, for, I think the people from back home, like where I'm from Stratford, they're like, oh, like you guys don't go hard and sparring or anything like that. They'll kind of like downplay it or something because they don't understand like, you know, we're sparring. Like they'll be like, oh, they don't really understand the aspects of it. But uh, we're in the practice room basically. And, uh, you know, he's looking around and this was like before he was fighting Serial Gone. And uh, he looks at me and I'm like 220 at that point. And like, I'm wearing like kind of like uh, a shirt with no sleeves. So I'm looking big, right? I'm, I'm, looking, <laughs> I'm looking big, right? I'm feeling myself, you know, I'm, I'm looking good. And he looks at me, he's like, you want to do uh, the next round? I'm like, I'm like, if you don't, I... as as you don't, he's like, as long as you don't kill, I said, as long as you don't kill me. And he goes, as long as you don't kill me. And, you know, right then and there, you're just kind of like, okay, like, he's a nice guy. Like, you know, he's not going to, like, murder me or anything like that. Right. But um, So then, like, the previous round, I, like, while he was going, I, I took the round off, watched him kind of kill a guy. And then I'm like, oh, damn, all right, our round's up next. I'm just not making eye contact with him, <laughs> seeing if I can go with someone else. And then he's like, like oh. yeah, he points over me. He's like, let's go. I'm like, damn. And so I'm just kind of, like, squaring off with him and, you know, he's, uh, you know, kicking me and, you know, ends up taking me down and, you know, hitting me and, you know, it was, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. And I'm like, damn, I'm, I'm fighting Francis and Gander. This is a, the coolest thing ever, even though it hurt. <laughs> it was awesome. And then we did the falling round after that. So it was an incredible experience and, you know, go and shout out to Extreme Couture out in Las Vegas um, for always having me out. They've got a stable of amazing fighters. Uh, Sean Strickland, uh, great guy, Chris Curtis. Um, who else, man? There's just so many guys out there. Alex Polizzi, the guy that fought Yoel Romero, he's out there. There's just so many guys out there. They're always welcoming. And so, yeah, I really appreciate uh, them having me out. So, How did you uh, link up with that team? Like, how did that relationship start? Um, so back in 20, I would say, damn, 2011. Um, so I grew up in London, Ontario, where like Sam Stout, uh, Chris Ordexi, Mark, Mark Hominick, all those guys are from, and I started training with them. And then a guy named Sean Tompkins, who was their coach, uh, had a place in Vegas. And so when I was younger, like before I even really started like competing, it was just kind of more doing it for, uh, you know, for fun. Um, 
I went out there because I, I went to watch UFC uh, in Vegas Memori Memorial Day weekend. And that was when they had the tap out or yeah, the tap out uh, training center. So I went there, um, trained with those guys. And then there was a guy named Nate Pettit, uh, who's a striking coach. So I did pads with him and, you know, kind of just kept in touch with him. And then so he's at Extreme Couture now. And then back in 2018, I went down there with uh, TJ Laramie. Um, him and I went out to uh, Extreme Couture. We're training at uh, the UFC PI as well. I just kind of messaged Nate. I'm like, hey, like I'm coming back like this and that. And ever since then, I've just been kind of going back and forth. So that's I mean, that's an awesome hookup to have all those bodies yeah. to be able to go to and get that good training in. Yeah. Uh, is it true that you recently signed with a new management team? Yeah, I signed with uh, Upgrade Management. They're out of um, California. Shout out to Julian. Great guy. Uh, they seem like they're awesome people. Everything's going really well so far. And, uh, you know, they're, everyone's being, everyone's very welcoming. Chris also as well is also a great guy. So yeah, everything's go, going well. And you tend to talk about game plans with management teams and that sort of thing. So, uh, what have the conversations been like when you try to map out 2022? Well, I, I told them straight up, like what we kind of sort of talked about, it's like, Hey, like I'm, I know I'm not ready right now let's just get it in a few more fights and then kind of see where we're at. Like I've got my fight in August, um, against a guy, you know, very winnable fight. Um, and so just taking it one fight at a time, however, you know, I would like to fight at least once more time, um, this year to get my record up to roughly seven and four. And then, you know, like, I'm not going to try to rush into things like I used to at the beginning of my career. Like I rushed into my pro debut, I rushed into like a few other fights that I should never have taken. Um, but you know, I'm just going to kind of like take it one fight at a time and, uh, I'm only 28 years old. So, I mean, the, uh, the average age of, uh, uh, UFC middleweight's 34, right? So, I mean, I've got tons of time and, uh, I just got to stay patient. Like, I know I've got the tools. I'm an exciting fighter. Uh, I've got amazing stand up. Uh, you know, all my fights are very exciting. Uh, I've got all the tools to, you know, be a, a, a great fighter for, you know, a league like the UFC or Bellator, even PFL, wherever, uh, you know, wherever I can, I can, you know, sign with, however, uh, yeah, it's just going to take some patience. So. And it looks like your mission continues on August 11th, right? It looks That's like we're correct. going up against PD Coxon yeah. at EFC worldwide in Africa. First of all, yeah. have you ever been to Africa? No, I never have. Like I'm super excited for this one. So. That's a pretty wild trip. Like that's, yeah. that's exciting. Yeah. yeah. I, uh, I was just actually talking to my friend, Sergio. He actually is uh, an agent with uh, upgrade as well. Like, you know, a part, like a huge part of me fighting. Like I, I love traveling, like traveling, fighting and training. They're just like my three favorite things. Right. So if I could travel to train and travel to fight, I mean, like I'm, I'm going to be very happy. I'm going to be a very happy individual. Right. And so like, it doesn't really excite me to fight, like, you know, in Ontario where I'm from, like, you know, I'll, I'd love to fight in Toronto or that's where I'm living right now, or in London, that's where I, I you know, grew up and went to school. Um, but like, I mean, fighting elsewhere in Ontario just doesn't really excite me. There are promotions in Ontario and I've been asked several times, but like, honestly, I, I, I love the travel part. I love seeing new places. Um, not only that, but it helps with my brand recognition as well. You know, people, when I say I'm going to fight in South Africa, people jump up, they're like, whoa, that's so cool. And you know, it, it is very fascinating that I'm fighting in South Africa. Like yeah. what other Canadians you don't hear fighting, it very often. No, what other <laughs> Canadians fighting in South Africa? Like it's pretty, it's pretty amazing. And the promotion is incredible. Um, and so, yeah, I'm super excited about this one. So you must get excited then to go to your opponent's home turf, right? Cause yeah. he's from Africa. So yeah. does that excite you? Does that add to the nerves? Like, does that it, do anything for you? Um, honestly, like I was supposed to fight here in Ontario in December and like, it's just such a hassle that like, I was supposed to fight an American and he was supposed to come to Canada and like cross the border, or have a vaccine. It's just like, okay, like, is he even going to make it? Like, there's just so many factors of like, you know, like, is he going to get into Canada and, and that sort of stuff. And for me, I like going to other people's places because I know I'm going to show up. Like, I don't know if this guy's going to end up on the flight. I don't know if he's going to like be able to cross the border. And, you know, I don't know if he's going to even show up and, you know, 
come to my backyard and fight me. Whereas I know I'm going to go to South Africa. No one's stopping me. I'm going like 100%. I'm going to fight this guy. And yeah, sometimes it does get nerve wracking that I'm fighting against, you know, a guy from their home turf and they've got their crowd, you know, booing me. And yeah, it could be, you know, it does get a little, um, it does get a little scary sometimes, but you know, you're getting in a fight. So <laughs> yeah, no matter where it is, once yeah. the cage closes, exactly. <laughs> the crowd doesn't really matter. No, uh, exactly. But you, you were talking about borders and I mean, in the peak of COVID, I just kept hearing about how strict Canada was and Canada seems to still be pretty strict with everything that's going on. Yeah. What's the situation like with COVID and uh, oh regulations and that sort of thing? How, how are things now? So for two years, it was horrible. Uh, yeah. You, know, you, could, you couldn't even leave your house. And uh, I took a fight and basically I like, I, so what happened was, sorry at one point there was like a, a time where if you left the country you'd have to quarantine for two weeks or go into like a quarantine hotel and pay like three grand and so like i signed for a fight and i'm like damn like i haven't fought in a year and a half like i can't just not fight and so i took a fight and and like the training camp was just absolutely horrible like you couldn't go into the gyms we were training obviously but mm -hmm. it was like okay like kind of like it was really sketchy. Like we're going through back doors. Right. There's bylaw officers coming and like, you couldn't go to the gym. Like when you wanted to, like right now I'm going at like 4 30 PM because like, you know, I, I scheduled a training session with a guy and I'm going to go there a bit early, do some train uh, strength conditioning and that sort of stuff. And like, that wasn't an option before. It's like, you have to train at like 6 PM or not at all. And so it's like, okay, well, I, I guess I'll do that. And so what happened was I got a fight scheduled and um you know i found out okay well like i can't really bring a corner man because like they don't, like i don't want to ask this guy to come with me and then like he has to quarantine for two weeks and then like he can't work or like he has to go in the hotel and like he has to pay like three grand so it's like it's not like i can't ask him so i ended up going by myself and meeting with a guy there who i actually met in my previous fight in tennessee his name's cody he's a really good guy but then thankfully I had a teammate fighting on the, on the night before me. So then I had two guys from back home. So it kind of worked out at the end, but like just the whole situation was, was, was I really to hope we don't have to go through that again. And right now it's, it's pretty normal other, other than the fact that like you need vaccine passports to, to, to fly and that sort of stuff, which isn't an issue for me. I have my vaccine. So. Yeah. Well, hopefully we're, <laughs> We can leave that behind us. Yeah. We can move forward for 2022. <laughs> yeah. August 11th is coming up fast. How can we watch it in the States? Do you know? Um, I, I have no idea. It's a, it's a pretty decent promotion. And I, yeah. I, I asked them and they said that there will be a stream. So Okay, uh, great. They, they used to be on Dizin actually, which is super cool. Oh, um, nice. Yeah. I, so I, I don't quite know how you could watch it right now but I will definitely be posting the link because this one I'm Great. super excited for and they've got a, an amazing production team that looks very professional and uh yeah I'm very excited yeah we'll keep our eyes open and uh we'll keep our eyes peeled for that stream so it's EFC worldwide in Africa so dope on yeah. August 11th yeah. Uh, wishing you all the best and thank you so much for your time today Thomas Theokaris thank you so I much I appreciate you so much thank you so much